left-wing leader Gabriel Boric was officially sworn as Chile's youngest president in its history in a pretty historic event where the different left-wing parties and organizations of this country surrounded the Congress of the port city of Valparaíso in order to celebrate the moment. This situation represents a new episode in Chile's modern history, considering that Gabriel Boric will be the most left-wing, he will represent, his presidency will represent the most left-wing administration that the country has had since its return to democracy. So the rise of, of President Boric has sparked a lot of hopes among progressive in this South American nation. However, there are many political analysts that believe that this administration could end decades of economic stability. After all, we need to remember that Chile has been the main bastion of free market and fiscal prudence in Latin America over the last few years. So President Gabriel Boric will be ruling the country in a pretty delicate and, and historic moment as well, considering that this country, Chile, is in the midst of redrafting its current constitution, which was originally drafted during the years of right-wing dictator Augusto Pinochet. On the other hand, it is important to, to remember that President Gabriel Boric will also face a rat of challenges from an economic slowdown that the country has been experiencing over the last few months, high inflation, and of course, which could be even worse, a split legislature. This could be even worse because we need to remember that many people believe that Gabriel Boric could end up being a pretty radical leader, a pretty radical president. And in South America, we have watched that every time a radical leader rise, there are two outcomes. Every time the legislative branch is against him, is against the leader. There are always two outcomes. The first one is that the person in question, the president in question, decides to go full authoritarian and ignore what the legislative branch tells him to do. On the other hand, another pretty significant outcome of this particular situation is always the fact that the president in question decides to essentially accept what the legislative branch says and this can create a, a, pretty, a pretty significant political or social chaos because we need to remember that these types of leaders are characterized by populism, by the way they make pretty remarkable, pretty, pretty impossible promises to fulfill. So the fact that the legislative branch prevents the president from, from, from fulfilling his campaign promises can sometimes end in a political crisis where the different parties go full against the president. In fact, in the vast majority of cases, the same the, the party that the president is part of always tend to be quite aggressive against the president or it is the same people of the country in question, which in this case is Chile, that essentially decide to make full protest, widespread protest. So it remains unclear how this administration will end because we need to remember that Gabriel Boric, he always was a radical left winger, but over the last few years and especially over the last few months, he have definitely softened his tune. So he will have to satisfy the Communist Party's demands so he could maintain this support. We need to remember that he is not part of only one party. Gabriel Boric is essentially the leader of a coalition of left-wing parties, but the most important party is the Communist one. So we're going to see what is going to happen in this country over the next few years with the new president, Gabriel Boric. And of course, we will be informing you here on this channel. Reporting from Medellin, Colombia, Luis Orozco, Newsweek.